What's up guys, my name is Chirag and welcome to this video tutorial. In this video tutorial, I'm going to cover on how to add SQS trigger within Lambda function. So here within this tutorial, the ideal flow will be we will send a message using simple queue service and that is going to trigger a Lambda function and uh, we'll write a few lines of code to store that message or data within the S3 bucket in the file. So here we are going to deal with basically four services that is SQS, Lambda function, IAM role and S3 bucket. So let's get started. Assuming that you already have logged in into AWS management console and once you are there, navigate to SQS. So we will start with creating the queue. Now Amazon SQL service is a reliable, scalable, fully managed message queuing service. So ideally uh, it can be a middleware between sender and receiver, right? So uh, let's get started. So click on get started now. And here we are going to create a new queue. So give it a name. I will say sample. Now the second option is what type of queue do you need? So we have two options that is standard queue and FIFO queue. So if we look at the diagram, the diagram are pretty much self-explanatory. So uh, within standard queue, as you can see the number three, right? So it's been mentioned twice. So what does it mean that uh, occasionally more than one copy of message is delivered, right? and it's not in order in which it is received right so basically messages might be delivered in an order different from which they were sent now within fifo queue it's a first in first out delivery so the order in which the messages are sent and received is strictly preserved right so we can see that within the diagram and a message is delivered once and remains available until a consumer processes and deletes it. So duplicates are not introduced into the queue. So uh, you can select a queue based on the scenario or the use case that you are trying to implement. So here uh, I will select standard queue and we will move on by clicking on configure queue. Now here uh, we have certain queue attributes uh, that we can configure. So the first one is default visibility time. So basically this configuration will help to prevent other consumers from processing the message again after it is being received by one of the consumer for processing. So basically, uh, for example, uh, we have multiple consumers or multiple Lambda function that are consuming the messages from queue for processing. So for example, the first Lambda function has fetched or received a message from the queue. Now that message will be invisible for 30 seconds for rest of the consumers right so that's what uh, default visibility timeout is so by default it's ideally 30 seconds but uh, you can um, change it between 0 seconds to 12 hours now the second option that we have is message retention period so basically uh, it's the amount of time that amazon sqs will retain a message if it does not get deleted Right, so it can be between one minute and 14 days. And then uh, we have maximum message size uh, is ideally between one and 256 KB. So maximum you can send the message uh, of 256 KB. Uh, you cannot exceed that size, right? And then uh, we have delivery delay. So delivery delay is also known as delay queues. So delay queues let you postpone the delivery of new message to a queue for a number of seconds that is being configured over here. Now, if you create a delay queue, any messages that you send to the queue remain invisible to consumers for the duration of the delay period. So by default, it's zero seconds. So as soon as the message is being received in the queue, uh, it's immediately visible to the consumers and then we have receive message wait time so it's the uh, maximum amount of time that a long polling receive call will wait for a message to become available before returning an empty response so i'm going to leave these uh, queue attributes as it is and we will move on with uh, dead letter queue settings what exactly is uh, dead letter queue so due to some reason the message cannot be processed by consumer and it failed or uh, maybe after exceeding the maximum receives 
you can send that message to dead letter queue for further debugging to uh, analyze the uh, root cause of failure right so dead letter queue is something uh, can be used for uh, debugging and then uh, we have server side encryption settings so we are going to leave it as it is and once uh, you are done with this click on create queue And now the queue has been created successfully. Now we will jump to IAM role. Now we are going to create this role for the Lambda function. Now once you are there, click on roles from the left panel and say create role. Select Lambda as a service because we are creating this role for Lambda function. Next permission. So here uh, we have to assign to permission that is lambda execute and sqs so we will say sqs full access say next tags i will say name sqs lambda review Give it a role name. I will say sqs underscore lambda and say create role. Now the role has been created successfully. Now let's go ahead and create the S3 bucket in which uh, we are going to store the uh, message data. So I will say create bucket. I will say sqs uh, demo tutorial and say create now we have also created bucket successfully lambda management now let's jump to the lambda management console now once you are there click on create function give it a name i will say sqs lambda Select runtime as Python 3.8. Now within permissions, uh, we are going to select use an existing role and select the role that we have just created. That is SQS underscore Lambda and say create function. Now once the function is created, we have to add a trigger. So click on add trigger from designer panel. Within trigger configuration, select SQS. Now here uh, within SQS queue, uh, since I have only one queue, so it's uh, selected. And then we have the batch size. So ideally it's the maximum number of messages to retrieve in a single batch, right? So say add. And we have successfully added the trigger. So now uh, before we move on, uh, let's write some code. So as I said, uh, we are going to uh, dump or write the file within S3 bucket. So we will require Boto3 over here. So say import Boto3. So I'll say print event first. So uh, before writing the code further, let's print the event and see uh, what we are getting. So save this Lambda function. Now navigate back to SQS management console. Select the queue that we have just created. Now uh, click on queue actions, say send a message. Now here I will send a, a JSON uh, response or the JSON message. I will say name and maybe I will pass channel. And that's it.
now you can also pass uh, metadata for this message uh, using message attributes so maybe you can uh, add on the name i'll say name and value as personal info and say add attributes now once you're done with the uh, configuration of message attributes or defining the message attributes and defining the message body say send message now this should be able to trigger the lambda function so let's check the cloudwatch log so navigate back to the function that we have just created click on monitoring and say view logs in cloudwatch now as you can see uh, we have the logs over here now we had print the event so it says records and then we have a message id receipt handle and all this metadata and then uh, within body uh, we have the message uh, that is the json uh, key pair value that we have sent and then we have attributes and then we have message attributes in which you can see uh, the key value pair of the message attributes that we have sent right so uh, this is how uh, the event look like uh, when it is being triggered uh, by sqs right so uh, let's get back to lambda management console click on configuration now here as I said, uh, we'll write some code. So we have defined Boto3, so we will define S3 bucket object. We will say Boto3.client S3. And then we will fetch the data, the JSON data that we will receive in the message. So I will say JSON.loads. event of records of zero of body so this is where uh, we will receive the message if we look at the uh, event within the cloudwatch log and then finally uh, we can do some processing right and post processing that data we can upload it back to s3 bucket so s3 dot put object followed by bucket name so the bucket name was sqs demo tutorial followed by the key so i will say data dot json and followed by the message body or the text body so body equal to json dot dumps data right and i will save this now let's go ahead back to sqs management console and resend the message again so I will say send another message. I'm going to leave everything as it is. And I will say send message. Now if we look at the CloudWatch logs. So it is being triggered. And uh, it is being executed successfully. So let's have a look within the S3 bucket. And we should be having data.json over here. And here we go. So let's have a look. So as you can see, uh, we have the data uh, that we have uh, received in terms of message from SQS and we had dumped it uh, within the S3 bucket within the JSON file, right? One more thing I would like to highlight here is that within message body, apart from JSON data, you can also send XML data as well as unformatted text. So these are the 
three types that you can uh, include or send as a message within the message body right and apart from that within message attributes you can include three types of message attributes that is one is string second is number and binary so these are the three types of message attributes that you can send along with the message body so what i have did here is i have simply sent a message using sqs and i had simply uploaded that as a json within the s3 bucket uh, but ideally uh, in ideal scenario there will be a processing method right so once we receive the message uh, we will have some function that will be called to process that data and post processing that data and there will be some destination or maybe uh, s3 could be a destination to upload the processed data so right so that's how uh, the SQS uh, Lambda works. So uh, ideally SQS comes handy in for example while setting up data processing pipelines for example a sensor data coming from IoT device right and uh, also it is widely used in variety of application as a middleware as I mentioned earlier. So well this is how you can uh, create a SQS queue and add a Lambda trigger right so well uh, that's it for now if you want me to do tutorial on any use case of service then please leave them below and i will try my best to come up with the tutorial as soon as possible and if you have any queries or comments then again please leave them below and don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel and see you next time